How would you feel if your job added a room where you can just go in and break crap? Break room r slash technically the truth, reddit link If this is going in r slash technically the truth, please put a blue circle around my comment reddit link Put mine in a red square Put a green dot by mine And a purple rhombus around mine And draw pi next to mine Username checks out r slash username checks out, reddit link if this gets on our slash username checks out can I have an orange circle around my name? Reddit link And report the next guy for tax fraud I am Donald Trump And blot out everyone's vowels Just put F you above my name And my X And a black diamond around mine And a gold medal next to mine I didn't have gold but here's some silver just cover me using potato And a purple dragon next to mine If this gets on that sub can you black out everyone's names? I request an oblong circle that is shaded burgundy Draw a 69 next to me Would be better if we actually break stuff It's just one of those days Where you don't want to wake up Everything is effed Everybody sucks you don't really know why But you want to justify Ripping someone's head off No human contact And if you interact Your life is on contract Your best bet is to stay away mother effer It's just one of those days It's all about the he says She says bullcrap I think you better quit Let the crap slip Or you'll be leaving with a fat lip It's all about the he says She says bullcrap I think you better quit Talking that crap It's just one of those days Feeling like a freight train First one to complain Leaves with a blood stain Damn right I'm a maniac You better watch your back Cause I'm effing up your program And then you're stuck up You just lucked up Next in line to get effed Someone's never dropped the glass coffee pot Shampooing the aftermath out of carpet is something I'd rather not do again Does a personal breakdown count? It's good to have an emotional breakdown every once in a while Biscuit limpifies Leaskit bimpifies I'm a software developer and just yesterday me, my co-workers and my boss were seriously talking about getting a punching bag for the office But I like your idea too as a Java programmer, I think I need this too Just have null pointer exception written on the side of it So you can beat the crap out of all of your problems Just tape a picture of the right parenthesis onto the bag Smirks in C Laughs in segmentation fault core dumped That's bad right? It sounds bad Nah, it just means you accessed memory you shouldn't Probably from a bad pointer or thinking something is a pointer when it is not I work with simulation software written half in C for my university job The lab professor added a link to a XKCD comic in the C error messages I will forever associate segment faults with this slide Web link College student here studying Python slash Java You're making me scared It's scary I don't know why I'm studying Python in C slash C++ with my free time Really only so much you can do with Excel sheets I'm hoping I can get discovered and just focus on my acting for a living As an advanced Java programmer, I'd recommend a punching bag factory Damn code PC load letter I got a cheap punching bag, but now I'm not sure where to hang it Everywhere has so much breakable stuff Isn't that what they use IT for? I have a better idea Old slash fully broken computers, laptops, etc. that you get to smash up every time you get frustrated, to spare your own Why are y'all in an office during a pandemic? Is your boss a butthole or do you live in a country that hasn't completely effed handling this? I'm a software developer, and I just call this room the office 
I do that at my job. I go in complete strangers' homes, charging in with an axe, with almost no prior warning. Often in the middle of the night, even on weekends and holidays. I sometimes have to smash the front door or a window just to get in. First, I'll drag the occupants out with great speed and force if I have to, and then deliver them to my co-workers in the van outside waiting to transport them to the receiving facility. When I'm back inside, I absolutely will break crap with my axe if it is necessary for getting the job done. My most common targets are walls, ceilings and cabinetry. Overall, firefighting is a pretty satisfying line of work. Love this answer. I remember there was a thread where people asked why didn't they just underscore and the firefighters chimed in and said that any opportunity to legally break crap is taken, especially if it's in the act of saving someone. Wow. Sounds like some highly undisciplined amateurs to be honest. Preserving property is very much a part of the job. In reality I only break walls and ceilings as a necessary step in finding hidden fire and void spaces or gaining quick access to places. Breaking people's stuff just for the joy of breaking stuff is absolutely not in line with the intent of the job and does nothing to preserve our integrity and public trust. You only break what needs to be broken. Which is occasionally lots of stuff. A standard house fire assignment in my department includes three engines, two ladder trucks and a heavy rescue, each with five firefighters on board. Jam that many, mostly, big, thick guys in an unfamiliar house, with tools, hoses, air packs, in an urgent situation, while completely blind, we are going to tend to be bulls in a china shop, not a bunch of delicate ballerinas. YouTube link. That's 30 people. I was not expecting firefighters to work in such large groups. Today I learned. And that's just the ones that go inside. There's also a lights and air unit of a few people, at least two chiefs, a safety officer, the investigations unit. Other units can get added as necessary. Yeah, it seems to be all situational. Obviously if you can get everybody out pretty easily, you do. If you can't, and you got to break crap, you break crap, as you know. They don't want to break all the crap, but sometimes I'm sure crap gets bad enough that breaking crap is the best option to save lives instead of walls. To be faither. Well. I assume the intent is that life is prioritized over property. Of course, this is assuming the people responding are actual firefighters and not some couch potato. It is Reddit. Yeah that attitude sucks ass. Just because you won't get in trouble for breaking it, doesn't magically mean that someone's belongings aren't theirs anymore and won't be missed. I don't think that's what they mean. I think they're thinking break this wall instead of potentially letting people die or break this wall to make sure the fire isn't still raging between the walls I really think people are blowing this out of proportion. Exactly. Or break this cabinet so I can get a hose aimed through a wall into the room that is burning. At that point the house contents are gonzo. Better kill that fire before the neighborhood goes up. Blowing things out of proportion? But this is Reddit. That's unheard of. I don't know. Honestly I saw a picture online and I think that the firefighters who did it enjoyed themselves and the car owner had it coming. Dude apparently parks in front of a fire hydrant, firefighters needed the hydrant and busted the effers windows to run the hose through. Sure they could have ran the hose over or under the car but hopefully the car owner learned something about being more observant about where they are parking. No, high pressure hose needs to be as straight as possible. Kinks and bends cause pressure problems. Lay it on the roof and you'll have body damage, water is heavy. Run it underneath, who has time to fiddle around fishing it under the vehicle when something is burning and you need the water? That seems like a rare thing. I know several firefighters and they are definitely of the mind that they are public servants. Sometimes they roll their eyes at the public for sure, but they are happy to help and see themselves as such. Most, not all, people who serve the public feel this way, at least in medicine and fire. Basically the living saving crap. The worse we see, the more jaded we get, but there's usually still a soft tender core left underneath. Like leftover lasagna. Got me in the first half not going to lie. I guess now I've got to get you in the back half. No job unfinished. My uncle from Alabama used to get me in the back half. My guess was burglar. Dark to wholesome real quick. 
You sound like exactly the kind of person I want to give a chainsaw and a smashed up car, and I say that in all sincerity, I trust you to bail my ass out if it got wrecked. Good morning Juarez family. I'm going to go into people's houses I'm in the night and wreck up the place. Nixon. You get an upvote genuinely thought criminal. Thank you for your service though. Uck, why would anyone be proud of killing fires? Trophy hunters, meat eaters, and fire killers are the worst. You forgot windows. You forgot how you break every window you pass to avoid a backdraft, or at least that's what my old firefighting buddy said. He said he loved it, too. Oh god no. Some windows, yes. But in a very strategic, disciplined and controlled manner, based on fire size and spread, wind and utilization of the hose line. Just breaking every window all willy-nilly can give the fire way more oxygen than we are ready for and it's just unnecessary damage. Sound reasonable. To be fair he was a giant pyro and most of our discussions on the matter were with beer in hand. The guys in the van appreciate referring to us as the guys in the van. Rather than some other terms. Team player. Thank you for your dedicated and difficult service. God bless you. Very well respected job and the fact you are saving people's lives. God bless you. And thank you so much. You should totally recruit people to be firefighters. Man you confused me so bad till the last sentence, smiley face. You are a poet, kind sir. Slash or nana noise. Would feel great, if I just had a job. I'll hire you as a vandalist or is that not the same thing? Well, I guess it would be a crime, instead of a job offer. If you have the right permits, then you are a demolition expert instead of a vandal. Exactly. I do contract work for the federal government removing threats by various methods including poison. Sounds cool but I am basically a gardener. It's all in the wording. Unfortunately they stopped recycling so no more glass smashing. I had a job providing private telephone service to secure gated communities. AKA inmate telephone systems. Then you'd need a fix room to take the edge off, or stick it back on. Same here, unemployment sucks. I'd love to have the tools to go smashy smashy on dead cars. Get all the rage from the last 10 months out. I would have to build up my upper body strength first. As someone who was once unemployed, I can tell you how to get a job. This method isn't 100%, perfect, but it will increase your chances to know these things. Employers, or interviewers per se, spend a lot of time hiring, which means they deal with a lot of people trying to get in. Because they have an inside perspective of the business, they can pick out the duds from the decent ones pretty quickly, and from the decent ones to the great ones, especially if they're looking for someone who understands the role prior to the interview. You want to be one of the great ones. First, you need to decide what you want to do. This can take a little time to narrow down, but the best way is to find the common trait in your hobbies and pick jobs that fit into that trait. For me, I like to contribute to the production of things, so metal fabrication is right up my alley. The next thing you want to do is find available jobs that are similar to that. If you can't or are unable to, then skip these steps and move on to the next one. When applying for a position, do your research. That includes research on the company, what the position is about, any specialized knowledge you might need to know, and what you might be expected to do. A good way to get a leg up is to watch the company's training videos as most of them use YouTube to host them, this will give you a sense of the company's identity and what kind of person they're looking for. All of this will count toward your experience and will show that you have initiative when you're in an interview. For an employer, there's nothing more time-consuming than interviewing applicants that have no idea what they're applying for, so if you can present that you do know, they'll take you a little more seriously. Well I'll just hope the janitor gets paid extra because I'm turning that room upside down. I worked with a girlfriend and we collected glass bottles so we could go to the roof and throw them at the wall when we needed to vent. We alternated who would sweep up after so there wouldn't be a huge glass pile building up. I worked in produce during my teens. My workmates and I did the same thing only with fresh bell peppers. Sure it was wasteful, but they make a very satisfying explosion upon impact. 
If enough people do this it will drive up pepper prices. Did someone say pepper's short squeeze? Almost maybe kind of no not really. Might be a spicy investment. I've already stocked up on two peppers. We like this stock vegetable. You just reminded me of something I hadn't thought of in a long time. When I was in middle school, and actually had friends, we would get our parents to put apples and oranges in our lunches, which I am sure they were very happy about, and then throw them as hard as we could against the walls of the school. Those fruit would explode with such a satisfying shower of pulp and juice. I felt bad for a moment now, with the thought of a janitor having to clean up that mess, but quickly realized that we always threw them against a sort of exterior wall and remembered that pieces of the fruit would be there for days and no one was cleaning them up. I am 38 now, and am really thinking of finding a nice wall to go and throw some fruit against. I may even bring my 9 years old and wife along. At least with peppers, the animals and bugs and molds will dispose of them. My dad and I used to throw rotten cherry tomatoes at each other from our garden. It was like a snowball fight in the summer. Overtime pay is good enough that I'll do just about anything. As long as I'm not, like, past my ankles in sewage. That's going to be double time. Wow, you're strong. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to be the first to know about Red Rabbit Reader's new videos. If you like our videos, please like them on YouTube and share them with your friends. We welcome your comments below. Press to start another of our videos.